Hello again, everybody. Welcome to the Rail Splitter Athletics Report. We are right smack dab in the middle of October, and I'm just going to say, in all of my years of doing this program, I will tell you that last weekend we probably had more going on here on the LMU campus athletically or athletically related than at any point in time that I've ever been here. So we've got a lot to tell you about tonight. Uh, things got started athletically on Friday of last week with the, the, the cross country team. They were on the road. We're going to tell you a little bit about that a little bit later on in the show and talk with Jeremy Donahue about his team's performance and about the upcoming South Atlantic Conference Championships over in Greenville, Tennessee. Uh, the volleyball team, well, they suffered another South Atlantic Conference loss, but they also picked up a victory. And this weekend, they're at home in the friendly confines of the Mary E. Mars. We'll talk about that. Rail Splitter and Lady Rail Splitter soccer teams both gave the LMU Blue and Gray alumni a lot to cheer about this past weekend. We're going to talk with Heli Odana about his team's efforts against Brevard College and about the upcoming weekend with Catawba College. And, of course, uh, you know, Monday marked the opening day of practice for the Lincoln Memorial University basketball teams. Uh, they are now in full swing and in preparation for the upcoming 2012-2013 schedule. And uh, we will talk with Josh Schertz, and we'll see a little bit of uh, practice footage from Roger Hodge and the Lady Rail Splitters. As far as the LMU golf teams are concerned, well, the Lady Rail Splitters closed out the fall schedule on a strong note. They had another top five finish. In fact, this was a top three finish at the uh, Patsy Rendleman Invitational over in Salisbury, North Carolina. And the Rail Splitters made a late charge in the uh, State Farm Intercollegiate, which was held over at Wasiota Winds Golf Course in Pineville, Kentucky, to finish second in that event. And we're going to talk about all that. We've got some footage from that event and much more. I'll pass along to you real quick that, uh, you know, the upcoming basketball season is just around the corner. If you haven't got your tickets yet, contact the LMU Athletics Office and they'll be glad to hook you up. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we've got a lot in store for you. Stay with us. Sigmund Communications is your local radio and television stations bringing your local information, local news, and the best music from yesterday and today. Sigmund Communications was established in 1987 on the campus of Lincoln Memorial University. Since then, we have been involved in community events and other projects. Sigmund Communications is not only your local radio and television stations, but we are a learning facility aimed at educating students in the field of broadcast communications. Sigmund Communications not just the great building with satellites that sits on the hill. We are now Media Stream, bringing home to you more and more improvements. As your hometown team, we're dedicated to bringing our friends and neighbors more service upgrades than ever before. Always available 24-7 customer service and technical support. 30-day money-back guarantee on services. Improved bundles that will save you money. Get ready to do more of the things you love with the people you love and with savings you'll love. Call 1-800-392-2662 for details. Media Stream, bringing it home to you. Bringing it home to you. Since 1973, DeRoyal has been a leader and an innovator in manufacturing products for the healthcare industry. DeRoyal supplies more than 20,000 products and product lines such as acute care, orthopedics, wound care, and trauma. DeRoyal is proud to be the largest supplier of orthopedic soft goods to clinics and hospitals in the nation. Since its start in Tazewell, Tennessee, DeRoyal has grown to open factories in over 29 locations worldwide and employs over 2,000 people. DeRoyal, a name you can trust and an employer you can count on. Looking for efficient, compassionate, and comprehensive health care for you and your family? Visit the University Medical Clinic. All providers are faculty members of LMU's DeBus College of Osteopathic Medicine and are board certified in their specialty. Multiple specialties available including family medicine, internal medicine, OBGYN, and osteopathic manipulative medicine. With locations in Harrogate and New Tazewell and most insurance plans accepted, the University Medical Clinic is here to serve you. Call 423-869-7193 for an appointment. University Med Medical Clinic. All right, welcome back and let's get to it. The Lincoln Memorial University men's and women's cross country teams got things started last week with a trip to Wilmington, Ohio, where they competed in the Wilmington Fall Classic. Running for the first time in the uh, since the Greater Louisville Classic held on September 29th, both teams found the competition to be plentiful and quite talented this past weekend. LMU's women placed 19th among the field of uh, 33 teams participating and were again led by all South Atlantic Conference runner Sophia Lopez Mamendi, who completed a 5K race with a uh, time of 19.29.10 to finish 25th in the event, while the rail splitters turned in an 18th place finish among the 34 teams running in that 8K event. Bradley Maldonado carried the rail splitters uh, with a 51st place finish uh, in 26.25.73. Looking at the Wilmington Classic, it was uh, certainly some tough competition, maybe the toughest competition we've seen all season. 
but if you looked individually at the results, we ran pretty well with uh, almost all the runners running their best for the season or PRs uh, for their careers. So, you know, looking at the women, we felt pretty good with uh, with how we ran out front with Amber and uh, Sophia both running under 20 minutes uh, for the first time in, in their careers doing it at the same race. Uh, so that was big for us. And Amber moved up into the top 10 all time at LMU runners. Uh, and then we had Aura step in in the fourth position holding out Haley this past weekend, which was big for us. Uh, she ran her PR and then our five, six, seven runners, you know, they needed to step up this week with us holding out a few runners and they, of course, ran some of their best races of the season and that's what we need to see heading in to next weekend. And then the men, you know, we, again, individually, we ran a great race. Team-wise, not quite, you know, where we want to be, but, uh, you know, it was a huge field. Last week I said I, want, I would prefer to see him go out a little bit more conservative. Uh, but that just wasn't the case in this race. There was 350 runners or so, and, and you had to get out quick or you were going to get bumped around. Bradley Maldonado ran a great race for us. Uh, again, he moved up into the top 10 all time at LMU. Uh, Shane Kurtzinger also got under 27 minutes for the first time in his career, which was huge. Both teams are now in the midst of preparing for this Saturday South Atlantic Conference Championships to be held in Greenville, Tennessee. This marks the first time the event has been held in Greenville since LMU has been a part of the South Atlantic Conference. And head coach Jeremy Donahue is looking forward to his teams competing in this year's race. Oh yeah, of course, this is the race that uh, we've been gearing towards all year. Uh, we'll head over to Tusculum, of course, that hasn't been run before. Uh, so we'll you know, be on even ground with everybody else as far as you know, the outlay of the course. You know, looking at the competition on the on the women's side, I think you see that Lenore Ryan and Wingate are probably the, the favorites going into it. Uh, but we, we plan to put ourselves in good position to, to go after that conference championship if things go right for us. Uh, we just need to have good, consistent performances from our top five, and, and then we're going to be aggressive uh, with the rest of our runners, six through eight, you know, running aggressive races, trying to stick close to those top five. Good luck to the LMU cross country teams this weekend. The Lincoln Memorial University volleyball team got off to a start last weekend in South Atlantic Conference play on a road trip to North Carolina over at Wingate University and battled with powerhouse Wingate. Uh, one of the hazards of having the top record in conference is the bullseye that's on the back of your jersey. And that was the case for the LMU women on Friday evening when they took on the Bulldogs. Wingate took control from the opening serve and put the Lady Rail Splitters on the defensive as they came away with a 25-15 victory in the opening set. From there, although the Lady Splitters made it close in set two, again it was Wingate playing with the home court advantage and they took a 25-22 win uh, which pushed the match to a 2-0 margin and the Lady Rail Splitters with their backs to the walls. That pressure proved to be too much for LMU in the final set when Wingate rolled to a 25-16 victory to take the match in three sets and to hand the Lady Rail Splitters their second loss of the year in conference play. Now moving over Saturday over to Salisbury, North Carolina, the Lady Rail Splitters uh, traveled over there to uh, take on South Atlantic Conference opponent Catawba College. Despite having a little bit of pride taken away in the match on Friday by the Bulldogs, the Lady Rail Splitters appeared to be no worse for the wear as they bounced back to take a four-set victory from the Indians uh, of uh, Catawba by winning 25-20, losing 27-29, and winning 26-24 and 25-14 to capture their uh, seventh league victory of the season and their 15th of the year. Friday evening, the LMU women play host to Anderson University at 7 p.m. in the Mary Mars Gymnasium before defending the home floor on Saturday at 2 o'clock against the Wolves of Newberry College. The Lady Rail Splitters are 15-8 and eight overall and 7-2 and two in conference play entering this weekend's competition. Turning elsewhere, uh, on Friday evening, the, uh, it also marked what is hoped to begin a long and informative series documenting the history of Lincoln Memorial University Athletics and the careers of those who have played and served the blue and gray over the past 115 years. Lincoln Memorial University and Sigma Communications unveiled Rail Splitter Legends, the icon, which focused on the life and career of former LMU baseball and basketball coach, as well as athletic director Dean Bailey. Uh, approximately 50 people attended the premiere showing of the uh, hour and nine minute documentary, which was regarded a great success. And earlier this week, we talked with co-producer Adam Plyler about the program's debut and what it took to put together the story of a man that did so much for this university and its athletic programs. 
When Rusty came to me about the idea, I was very excited to start it. Um, with no budget and only spending $40, I think this is something that the university can be very proud of. But uh, what makes this documentary special to me is that uh, because I didn't have the opportunity to come to LMU as a student, uh, and I didn't know any of the athletic history, I got to learn at making this documentary, and that's what, that's what really made this special to me. Uh, while conducting these interviews, I could see the effect that Dean Bailey had on the maturity and the uh, character of all these people. And for that, I want to give him a big hand. And if he was here tonight, he'd be all smiles. In addition to that premiere showing while the weekend was homecoming on the LMU campus, the Lincoln Memorial University women's soccer team was also the first to take the field in collegiate play in front of the alumni attending this year's event. The Lady Rail Splitters snapped a three-match losing streak on Saturday when they played host to the Tornadoes of Brevard College and came away with a 4-0 victory. From the opening whistle, LMU gave the Blue and Gray fans a lot to cheer about as sophomore midfielder Savannah Pitt struck pay dirt in the seventh minute with help from Rachel Veneau off of a pass from the left side. The match uh, remained 1-0 until early minutes of the second half when LMU Sam Adams scored in the 55th minute on a direct free kick from 40 yards out to give the LMU women a 2-0 lead. Only minutes later in the 60th minute, Kristen Cook found the back of the net when she scored unassisted after dribbling through the defense and scoring from just outside the box. LMU's final goal came in the 80th minute of the match when Josephine Hedstrom scored her fourth goal of the year on a direct free kick from near the corner to give LMU their final 4-0 margin of victory. Uh, in, in, um, in the postseason, Really, this game was a critical game and a critical win for our ladies. And, and uh, I never take for granted Brevard. They always come here and give us all outs. Uh, they were very hardworking. They were very uh, physical, very, very physical. And, um, and, and they were plenty capable of, of uh, uh, taking a, a result away from us. They're still trying to get into the tournament. Uh, but uh, really looking at what our ladies did and looking of looking at um, the amount of people that contributed in terms of goals and really the, the, the running of the play. It was an all out effort from LMU. It was really uh, a lot of people pitching in you, you, uh, and, and I'm very pleased with the fact that most of them were young. You know, we're, we're talking several freshmen and sophomore, uh, maybe one junior that had one goal. Uh, so really things uh, for LMU look brighter and brighter as we look ahead. But we want to do something special and, and we want to also make it happen now. This Saturday, the Lady Rail Splitters travel to Salisbury, North Carolina to take on the Indians of Catawba College before returning to LMU on campus next Wednesday to play host a non-conference opponent, Bryan College at 3.30. We're going to take a brief time out. When we come back, we'll talk LMU men's soccer. That's right after this. Families adopt children from around the world and in our own backyard. I am teaching ethics to the next generation of lawyers. I will make a difference for the underserved of this region. I will be an advocate for my clients. As a prosecutor, I fought for those who couldn't speak for themselves. I'm a lawyer and professor. I will be a lawyer. I will be a lawyer. I will be a lawyer. I guess we'll take uh, Morty. Pick last, ouch. A vault will put you back on top. Quenches and kicks. Incoming! Yeah. You're a super soda mercenary. Vault, drinks like a soda, kicks like an energy drink. Get to it! History comes alive at the Abraham Lincoln Library and Museum on the campus of Lincoln Memorial University in Harrogate, Tennessee. Located 60 miles north of Knoxville and five minutes from the entrance of Cumberland Gap National Historic Park, the museum is home of one of the largest privately held Lincoln collections in the country. A place to learn and play. My museum includes interactive exhibits as well as special events and educational programs. For more information, go to www.lmunet.edu. We represent the Coke brand. We would like to sue Coca-Cola Zero. Would you say that we have a case? For what? For taste infringement. We want to just sue them back to the Stone Age to send a message that they're tampering with, really, the flagship of the company. 
it's one company. It's like you suing yourself. Yeah. But, but they're on a different part of our floor. Da, 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 da. Welcome back to the show. Let's turn to men's soccer. The LMU men's soccer team also picked up a big victory last Saturday in front of the homecoming crowd when the rail splitters rolled over the tornadoes of Brevard College with a 5-1 to one win. The rail splitters reeled off five consecutive goals, three of which came from sophomore forward Mario Pinto on the way to their eighth win of the year, their fourth in South Atlantic Conference play, and his third hat trick of the season. Diego Deschamps scored the other two goals while assisting one of Pinto's goals. Callum Holm and Chris Nash added the other rail splitter assists. Considering the number of seniors that we have and, and, and the, the things that go about when you have senior day, you sort of uh, always have it in the back of your mind, you know, are, are the players going to be focused? Are they going to be um, up for the game? Brevar is, is uh, a pesky team. They're, they're organized. They're, uh, they, they've been in every game that they play this year, regardless of their record, uh, whoever played them, when we took scout report from other teams, said that you're in for 90 minutes. It's funny as we mentioned that our team has been uh, like that the whole year. Uh, I, I, I can tell you pretty much every game so far in which I hear one minute left, you know, in the countdown, 10 seconds and below, in which we're still trying to score one, one more goal, and we almost do, you know, regardless if we win, lose, or tie those games. So uh, it happened again, you know, and, and our guys, the, the, the exciting thing about them is. Our volume of, of opportunities to score has been very, very high the whole year long. Now 8-3-1 and one on the year and 4-3 and three in South Atlantic Conference play. The Rail Splitters are currently in fourth place in the league standings and they travel to Catawba College on Saturday for a 7.30 p.m. match with the Indians under the lights. On Tuesday, the Rail Splitters again venture to North Carolina as they travel to Charlotte for a match with future South Atlantic Conference member Queens University. That too will be under the lights. First touch for that match is slated for 7.30 in Charlotte. And uh, another story related to Lincoln Memorial University Athletics. On Saturday afternoon in front of more than 200 people, LMU's favorite son, Scott Shields, returned to campus for homecoming 2012 festivities where his baseball number and jersey were retired and forever will be on the outfield fence to be recognized. Following a stellar career with the rail splitter, Shields went on to play for the Anaheim Angels where he pitched in the 2002 Major League Baseball World Series and helped his team win the title that year. After retiring his major league career more than a year ago, Shields still ranks as one of the organization's all-time statistical pitching leaders while still holding several records in Gulf South Conference and Lincoln Memorial University record books. During the event, Shields made a generous contribution to help Lincoln Memorial University build a new hitting and pitching facility adjacent to the Lamar Hennon and Dorothy Neely fields that will also house offices for both programs and provide a limited amount of storage. The gesture, folks, once again just corroborates a statement that I made several years ago. This guy is the same guy that graduated here more than a decade ago. Uh, he hasn't forgotten where he came from, and without a doubt, he is a class act. Moving right along, uh, turning to men's and women's golf on Monday and Tuesday, the Lincoln Memorial University men's and women's golf teams both hit the links as the end of the fall schedule rapidly closes in. The Lady Rail Splitters traveled over to Salisbury, North Carolina and the uh, Salisbury Country Club for the Patsy Rendleman Invitational hosted by Catawba College, while the Rail Splitters went over to Pineville for the State Farm Intercollegiate at Wasiota Winds Golf Course, and uh, that is one of three matches remaining on their schedule. The Lincoln Memorial University women's golf team capped their fall schedule with a third place finish in the Patsy Rendleman Invitational, which uh, competed, completed on Tuesday afternoon at Salisbury. The Patsy Rendleman Invitational was comprised of 87 athletes and 16 teams competing on Salisbury Country Club's 5,998 yard par 72 course. With their third place standing at the conclusion of the uh, second day, the Lady Rail Splitters completed a fall schedule with four top five finishes and three top threes. The LMU women notched splits of 310 and 314 for a total of 624, capping the event at 48 over par. Uh, Newberry College won the uh, Invitational with a two-day total 598, 17 shots ahead of their closest competitors. Tusculum College earned a runner-up finish with rounds of 308 and 307. The top five was rounded out by UNC Pembroke with 632 and King College with 642. 
and uh, over at the State Farm Inter Invitational or Intercollegiate, whichever you prefer to call it. Jamie Chapman's outstanding closing round and in, uh, individual medal distinction helped the Lincoln Memorial University men's golf team make a furious charge in the final round of the State Farm Intercollegiate to capture a second place finish in day two of the event. The State Farm Intercollegiate was comprised of 15 teams and 83 athletes competing at Wasiota Winds Golf Course, a 7,037 yard par 72 layout located in Pineville, Kentucky. The LMU white team, or A team if you will, cut 18 shots off their round one total to finish the two day total 584. The rail splitters fired a 301 on day one of the uh, tournament and a 283 on day two to cap the event at eight over par. LMU made a charge late in the round, however, they were unable to close the gap completely on King College, who posted rounds of 293 and 289 to take a two-shot win at the State Farm Intercollegiate. Tusculum College had a 590, Belmont Abbey 596, and Walter State Community College 602 as they rounded out the top five. Turning to men's and women's basketball, well, on Monday afternoon, the Lincoln Memorial University men's and women's basketball teams officially opened practice and the Lady Rail Splitters under the second year direction of head coach Roger Hodge hit the floor first in preparation for the 2012-2013 season. For the LMU men, a late afternoon practice was on tap and earlier this week we had the opportunity to catch up with head coach Josh Schertz and see what was in store for his team and what the expectations were for the upcoming season. We, um, you know, we obviously have tipped off practice. Uh, it's been a good start for us. Um, you know, preseason's long, about seven weeks, you know, in total. So glad to be on the floor with our guys. Monday was our first official day of practice, getting ready to follow it up here with day two. Um, certainly uh, excited about our talent level, but um, as most teams here in October, uh, we're not very good, uh, but but has the case across the board. But we're a team with a lot of talent, uh, like like the ceiling on it, um, and, and certainly there's a chance to be a special year for uh, uh, for LMU basketball if, uh, you know, as long as we do the right thing. So we're working uh, day to day. We've got uh, some, you know, we got Florida State exhibition coming up October 30th, open the regular season at home November 10th, and uh, we'll be swinging actually in the conference play by November 28th. So everything's happening right around the corner uh, and, and time to get to work and get started. So looking forward to what could be a, a terrific year here for LMU basketball. The Lady Rail Splitters open exhibition play against Middle Tennessee State University November 6th in Murfreesboro, Tennessee with a 7.30 p.m. tip-off while the Rail Splitters travel to Tallahassee, Florida on October 30th for a 7 p.m. bout with defending Atlantic Coast Conference champion Florida State University. Hold on, folks. Here we go again. All right, moving right along. Uh, you know, in other basketball news, the Lincoln Memorial University men's basketball team was selected to finish second in the South Atlantic Conference this season in the uh, SAC preseason coaches poll released uh, on Wednesday afternoon. Along with that announcement, Vincent Bailey garnered preseason all South Atlantic Conference first team honors, while senior Jake Troyley was elected to the second team. The Rail Spinners received two first place votes and 73 total points to notch a second place selection in the preseason coaches poll. Wingate University earned the first place nod, receiving five first place votes and 77 total points, a season removed from capturing the 2012 SAC Men's Basketball Tournament Championship. The Bulldogs tallied a 21-12 mark last season and advanced to the regional semifinals of the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. Newberry College was selected third in the poll, receiving one first place vote and 62 points overall. The Wolves finished fourth in the regular season standings last season and advanced to the semifinals of the SAC Championship. Uh, looking on down the line, to round out the rest of the field, Karsha Newman was selected to finish fourth. They got 57 total uh, uh, points and one first place vote. Anderson University, who really is somewhat a surprise back in the middle of the field, considering they've got a preseason All-American, Denzel Jones, picked to finish back in the five spot. Then Lenore Ryan, Tusculum College, Catawba, and Brevard round out the top ten. I'm not real sure how to think about that, but when you look at the preseason first team, in addition to Vincent Bailey making that uh, squad, Denzel Jones, obviously a first team selection, followed by Antoine Davis of uh, Carson Newman. No surprise there. Ishmael Sanders, look out for this guy this year. He's going to have a banner year. And then, of course, uh, uh, Don Ray Walker of Newberry and Odell Turner of Wingate. And that's about all we have for this. I think we're going to, we're going to what? We're going to go to the next story, I guess. I don't know. All right, moving right along. Uh, we, we have no next story. I don't know. <laughs> it's one of those deals here. Uh, we're going to go to a commercial break, and we'll be back. Stay with us. Nestled at the foot of the Cumberland Gap. 
Lincoln Memorial University honors the vision and spirit of Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln's values are perfectly in sync with the modern educational experience at LMU. Our students find personal attention is a way of life and a way to success. If Lincoln Memorial University fits your vision of college, visit our website at lmunet.edu for more information. Sigmund Communications is your local radio and television stations bringing your local information, local news, and the best music from yesterday and today. Sigmund Communications was established in 1987 on the campus of Lincoln Memorial University. Since then, we have been involved in community events and other projects. Sigmund Communications is not only your local radio and television stations, but we are a learning facility aimed at educating students in the field of broadcast communications. Sigmund Communications. Not just the great building with satellites that sits on the hill. We are now MediaStream, bringing home to you more and more improvements. As your hometown team, we're dedicated to bringing our friends and neighbors more service upgrades than ever before. Always available 24-7 customer service and technical support. 30-day money-back guarantee on services. Improved bundles that will save you money. Get ready to do more of the things you love with the people you love and with savings you'll love. Call 1-800-392-2662 for details. MediaStream, bringing it home to you. Bring it in home to you. Apologies about uh, going to commercial break like that, folks. Sometimes when you got a lot going on, that's what happens. Uh, what we were trying to allude to, finally in some other LMU athletically related news, last Saturday morning prior to the 2012 Hall of Fame induction ceremonies, LMU President Jim Dawson and Athletics Director Roger Vinoy were on hand in the Tex Turner Arena for the dedication of the new Doug Barnard Steve Day Media Room. The newest addition to the university's athletics facilities is designed to comfortably seat approximately 24 individuals and has state-of-the-art technologies such as in-ceiling projection screens, audio and video features, as well as university athletic graphics and other luxurious decor. The facility is intended to help coaches and their teams break down game film and will also be used uh, for athletically related news conferences and various other university sports related meetings. Uh, we've got about a minute left in the show and I'll tell you that uh, there is a lot going on in the next couple of weeks in terms of Lincoln Memorial University Athletics. Not so much here on campus, but when you get into the month of October, you got basketball getting cranked up for the uh, winter sports. but. A lot of the fall sports teams are jostling for position in the latest league standings. As I mentioned earlier, the LMU men's soccer team currently in fourth. They moved up a spot last week with that victory over Brevard. They desperately need a win on the road over Catawba this weekend. For the Lady Rail Splitters, things have gotten tough. They started out very strong, still looking to make a late run in the uh, tournament, but they've got a lot of injuries plaguing them right now. They've lost four or five individuals, and that's really hurt their rotation. As for uh, of course, the volleyball team, well, they're still in a tie for the first place position, and there's no stronger matches than this weekend with Anderson and, of course, Newberry, and we hope that you'll come out and support them at home in the Mary E. Mars Gymnasium. That's all the time for this week. We'll see you next week here on the Rail Splitter Athletics Report. <laughs>